Welcome to session two, Unlocking Your Mind. So today, Matthew and Gemma are going to help us out with our next session of our journey towards secondary school. If you remember last session, we decided we wanted to go from kid average to kid awesome. And we asked the question, what's holding me back? We decided to choose our attitude. So here is Matthew to introduce today's session. I want to talk to you about the importance of a growth mindset. Now that might sound a bit scary, but a growth mindset is one of the most valuable things you can have. When you try something new, you're not always the best at it because you're trying it for the first time. How easy to say, I can't do it. Here's an important word to attach to the end of that sentence. I can't do it yet. Because if you persevere, if you commit, if you give yourself the time to grow, you can grow. And that's why a growth mindset is such an important thing to have. Today, we're looking at that amazing thing inside your head, your brain. We're looking at whether you think people have a fixed mindset or a growth mindset. More of that in a moment. Did you know that your mind is very powerful? Your mind controls your thoughts. Your mind allows you to focus. Your mind will help you to achieve. Can you unlock your mind? Can you lock your mind? Yes, you can. You can do both. It is a choice. Carol Dweck, a famous psychologist, says there are two types of mindsets. Fixed mindset and growth mindset. Growth mindset is the secret of success. Let's understand the fixed mindset first. So if you have a fixed mindset, people think you can only be good at something if you are born, gifted or talented. You either think you have a talent for something or you don't. There's nothing you can do to change it, no matter how hard you try. So people think they are born just being good at maths or being brilliant at tennis or being able to sing like an opera diva or able to nail the dragon flip on a skateboard on the first go. Goodness, that sounds challenging. The problem with this mindset, though, is that if you believe you are born great at things or not, then you also believe that you can't practice or try hard to improve because it wouldn't make a difference. You either have it or you don't. So people who struggle think it will always be this way. And people who don't struggle assume that they are intelligent for life. They are both wrong. People with a fixed mindset say some of these things. Oh, we're all rubbish at maths in our family. My memory has always been bad. I can't remember things. I don't have the coordination for sport. I have always been bright. I am not very confident. Hard work is for other people. I am a natural. So now let's look at the growth mindset. People believe that their intelligence and ability can be improved with effort and the right strategies. They confront challenges. They have a passion for learning. They view failure as a springboard for growth. This mindset is linked to happiness and achievement in life. People with a growth mindset say some of these things. I'm not able to do this yet. Feedback will help me to get better. I sometimes make mistakes and that is good because I can learn from them and get even better. If I put more effort in, I will get better. I welcome new challenges. I can improve in this area if I practice. What might you think in each mindset? So we have a discussion task now. Look at these two people, each with a different mindset. Which mindset are you and why? Does it change depending on different situations in your life? 
and are you someone who thinks that you are just born intelligent? So you can either discuss these questions with somebody uh, who's nearby, either in school or at home, or you could write, write down some answers to these questions in your exercise book. So let's stay on our awesome mission and understand how we can get a growth mindset and change those fixed mindset voices we hear in our heads. When your brain tries to tell you, you can't do this because blah, 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 make sure you tell it that it is talking nonsense. Control those thoughts and don't allow them to get you into a fixed mindset headlock. Say hello to the growth mindset. That means we have to wrestle some of the other negative thoughts away. There are ways of doing this. I'm going to do an activity now called the worry jar. What are the things you tend to worry about which might stop you from trying something new or hard? Write them down in your booklet. Next week, you can look at the worry jar again, maybe with a parent or a sibling or someone at school and see if the worries still apply. Cross out the ones that don't. And then take a look at the ones that are still worrying you. Is there someone you can talk to about these? You can only change the way you think if you practice. You need to get the right kind of practice. So you can practice skills which will help you achieve your goals. You can do your research or ask for help so that you know what to practice. You can practice specific things. Test yourself from memory. Practice things over and over again and in different ways. And you can challenge yourself. Here's a quote by Benjamin Franklin. All highly competent people continually search for ways to keep learning, growing and improving. At secondary school, you will do subjects you have never done before. You will be asked to work in ways that are new. You will work with people who are different to you. You will find work challenging because it is a new key stage. You will find that you have forgotten a lot because you haven't been in school for a while. You will be with people who you think are more clever than you. And you will be with people who you think are perhaps not as clever as you. What will your brain say when you face these things? Will it say, I can't do it, I won't ever be able to do it? Or will it say, I am going to try hard, practice and not give up? Don't fear failure. Failure is how we learn to be better. Most people who have success have all made lots of mistakes and failed before that success. If you don't believe us... JK Rowling was 32 years old when the first Harry Potter book was published. Twelve publishers rejected her manuscript. She never gave up, even though twelve publishers didn't think Harry Potter would come to much. Failure taught me things about myself that I could have learned no other way. I discovered that I had a strong will and more discipline than I had suspected. Hello everyone. Um, today we're going to talk about unlocking your mind. Um, and I don't mean that being like... Um, reading your mind or getting the key and me looking inside your little brain. Um, I mean being free to think about yourself in a certain way. It's something that we touched on um, at the start of, of the videos in terms of thinking about what you want and what you want to achieve and, and where you want to be and what you want to gain from going into high school. Um, and unlocking your mind allows you to be free to dream free to explore the possibilities of, of what you want to do and so often we're very very good at saying I can't no I can't do that I can't do this that's impossible who's saying it's impossible because I guarantee you it's probably you a lot of our irrational fears come from ourselves and if they are said by other people that's okay too because we actually have the power as to whether we listen to them or not. 
this thing up here is so powerful. And we know it can be powerful in, in a negative way at times because sometimes these irrational thoughts and fears and, and new found thinkings coming that don't really exist. And it, but it can be so powerful because we can change that around by unlocking our mind. One of the ways that I have always unlocked my mind is by thinking about my evidence pot. And my evidence pot is a little pot that I pretend I've got in my little brain. And whenever I say to myself or a thought comes into my head about, I can't do that, I think, well, where's the evidence to suggest that I can't? Have I tried? No. Well, therefore, I should try because I can do it. Whether I succeed to a level of what I want or not is not the starting point, the starting point is giving it a go because the success can come after it because we can work on that. You know, nobody's perfect. Nobody gets to where they want to be straight away. A lot of the most successful people are in it for the long game. They're not in it for the short game. You know, it's it's the, the term of, of sort of walking before you can run. You know, we take our baby steps, we crawl, and then we walk, and then we run, and then we sprint, and then we fly. But unlocking your mind is key to being able to explore all of those things that you want to do. There is no I can't. There is no limitations. And one of the best things about being 12, 13 years old is the world is literally your oyster. You can go and take your life wherever you want to be. And that is so amazing and exciting if you can just unlock your mind to what desires you want to feel in the fire to give yourself a drive to want to learn and that doesn't have to be necessarily you know um getting the top grades all the time you know I, I hold my hands up I didn't as you know I, I spent a good few years in that hospital so I actually missed a lot of school and I didn't get all my grades but I got enough and I got the ones that I had a drive and a desire and I knew what I was good at and I focused on. We've got to allow ourselves to think freely. There are no limitations on ourselves and one of the other key things about unlocking your mind is to not let other people judge you and dictate where your mind and your life can take you. Because you are you, and you have more power and fire and control than you can ever imagine, and it can all be in such a positive way. So leading up to September, start to be excited, start to think freely, start to say I can and not I can't. See you next time. So use this time before you start year seven to have a go at things. Here's a little task for you. Identify three things that you say you can't do. Write them down. Now write each thing down using a growth mindset approach. For example, I can't do maths turns into I'm going to practice the things in math that I can't do yet. Think of something you've always wanted to get better at. Write it down. How could you practice that thing now? If you have someone to talk to, you could talk through your answers to this task. And finally, year seven is about trying your best, giving new things a try, not labeling yourself, making mistakes and practice, practice, practice. Keep the right mindset and you will be awesome.